Hello and welcome. So the microphone's for the purposes of the camera. So <laughs> hello and welcome to this evening's event, um, Out of the Box Biz for October. And we're in the fantastic venue called Liberty. Are you calling yourselves We Are Liberty or Liberty? Uh, Liberty. 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 Maybe you can elaborate on that. <laughs> Um, so I'm delighted that we're able to be here. This is like our home in terms of we go visit all our members throughout the year, but then we come back for the beginning of each financial quarter here at Liberty, which is a great thing to do because the beginning of each financial year um, quarter, I think, is significant. So I believe we're talking about business relationship building. So allow me to um, please welcome Jamie Vine. Thank you. Hello. So an intimate little group. Um, I've not actually prepared, I normally come with a presentation and have some idea about structure, but when Fleur asked me to, to talk about this, um, I, I really struggle to differentiate between a business relationship and just a relationship. And I think if you, if you do differentiate between the two, um, you're probably doing it wrong, in my view. So, you know, if you want to spend time with somebody on a social level, if you pick your partner because of a certain thing, you know, it, it, it's all about there being some mutual benefit to the interaction. And it's not about one side winning. Um, so I think from a, what I wanted to do is kind of set the scene with that and really open that up to a conversation and get your views on it and see if you share the views that, that I have on that. And that's really, I've never, I think where, where the success has come from in my sales career has always been from looking at every opportunity as to well, what's in it for them and making sure there's enough in it for them and enough in it for me for us both to be happy. and. It's certainly, I don't know if that's, that's just me or whether that's how I've learned what I do. But certainly uh, reputation means a lot. Sleeping well at night means a lot. And uh, doing the right thing in that, in that business environment uh, in the same way that you would treat your friends, it's just, it's just the right thing to do. And uh, that ultimately will lead to more business. It'll lead to more referrals. It'll lead to, it works. But that's not the reason you do it. You do it because you've got your moral compass in the right position and, uh, and you're doing something that, that, that has a value. Are you moving my furniture? <laughs> I'm glad you said that. <laughs> That's it. It's all part of the detox, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I, I really don't have much more in terms of content because I was hoping that we'd just start a discussion around it and, uh, and interact because it's, it's a small group. It's not like, like I say, the microphone's for the camera. It's not because I can't talk to you face to face. Um, but it would be good to get your views on that. And if, if you've got any experiences where that's proven to be correct or where you've had experiences where you've you know you've perhaps had a bad experience because somebody didn't approach the business relationship like they would their normal relationships i guess you know from, from my point of view i just don't see the difference no, i'm happy to jump in and challenge you just on one there. go for it um, i agree with pretty much everything you say and i remember actually um reading a book with richard branson said always leave something on the table yep um, that's how you get into business so i always but just, I've had a lot of German clients over the years, sort of German clients, and that's one thing that's quite different from an Australian perspective. When we have an Australian meeting with Australian clients, we tend to socialise initially at the beginning of the meeting quite often. Yep. As you can go. So rapport building, yep. And rapport building. Yep. The Germans, to my experience, has been very agenda driven. So they want to come in and they want to go straight to the business and they want to go for the agenda and make quite clear that business is the business. And then they're great afterwards, like socially they're absolutely sensational. Yep. But it's quite interesting, it's quite refreshing in clients because we know now when we have the meeting that we present the agenda and we just start pretty much straight on the, on the business side of it. Yep. And, and to be fair, we've had the relationship with these guys for a long time, so you know, it's, it's still over years. 
but it is business first, and then we go out and we'll have a meal somewhere or whatever. But it's quite mm. it's just a cultural difference between how we approach business here yep. and how much you have to A loss of structure. Yeah, no, I, I, I understand that. And culturally, there is there are some massive differences in how people people perceive to be a good deal. I think from a from what you've just described, that there would still be a beneficial relationship on both sides for that relationship to flourish. You just have segmented, uh, you know, business and social. Um, so I'm not suggesting every meeting's a party by any stretch of the, the imagination, but but certainly. I guess the, the the approach that you would you would do the same deal with your friend as you would with that person because there's enough money in it for you to provide a good service and they're getting good value you know and that's really um, what I'm trying to say but cult culturally there are there are many cultures where getting a good deal for for them is not a good deal for you and that's part of the culture um, you know we we've had we had a client in um, oh, Paul tells a story about a client he had in uh, in in London, and you know, the, 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 their culture um, was all about getting the best deal possible. To the extent where him and Paul, they, they they agreed a price, and this guy moved in, and then it got to renewal time, and he said he came to Paul and said, "Look, I know we're going to renew. I know what we've talked about price-wise, and I'm happy with that. But I want my son to come into the meeting." So you need to start higher. And I need to, to give you such a hard time that you drop. And he wanted his son to see that's how you do business. So culturally, he'd already trained his son to say, you have got to get, you know, these guys are always holding something. They've always got more they can give away. And he wanted to train his son to do that. And that was part of his culture. And obviously that's going to go down to his son and his son and his son, daughter. Um, but, you know, that, that, it, that was all... That was all showbiz. It wasn't real. Um, so I think if it's going to be a sustainable relationship and it's not just a, a one-off transaction, if you actually want a business, an ongoing business relationship with uh, with somebody, then yeah, personally, I think it's uh, it's got to be on that mutual beneficial basis. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I, I see um, I guess a lot of lawyers are just a transactional yeah. business. So it's just one transaction for me. So there's no point. There's no Lifetime clients, just one transaction, and they, they go so hard. Mm. There's absolutely no chance, whatever, that you know, the person will come back and deal with them. Yeah. Builders are very similar. So builders don't expect you to be a repeat customer. You know, because they just think how many people build more than one house in their life. In Australia, more than normal, but but <laughs> but <laughs> but certainly, you know, it's um. It's not. It's certainly not something you do on a regular basis, where you would, where it'd be worth nurturing that long-term relationship. Sorry, you were going to say. Yeah, I guess in my business it is all about nurturing relationships, and I find it's that trust that's so important. I think one of the days that you meet someone and you get a quick sale there and then, and it, to me, it's not about that. It's about doing what's right for them, and sometimes mm. it can take seven or eight exposures for them to trust you, like you were saying. That's how it is. In a, Personal relationships, so I completely agree with you. I think business and personal are very much the same from my perspective. And yeah. <laughs> 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 but thank you for that insight in Germany because my company is going into Germany next year. So that's a really good point for me to take on board. That they're very business, business, and then Get the agenda out to do anything like that. So get the agenda out to do it and say, this is what we're going to And then I'll just go back to you a little bit. Absolutely. And this is the agenda. That's a great way of doing a meeting. It's just like, get the business out of the way and let's party afterwards. You know, Sometimes you sit in a meeting over here and everyone's just like talking about us. Just chit chat. Come on, you know. Yep. Do the social stuff afterwards. But I think that's something else to that, Jamie, is the fact that within my business, I do a lot with family. Yep. And I deal um, with a lot of business people as well. And it's amazing seeing the relationships. A businessman for business, very respectful, you know, that's what he trades or she trades and so forth. That same person with their friends, same thing. Come to their family, especially their elders, goes out the window. Mm. And it's really weird, the, the moral compass somehow disappears. 
but sometimes with the other family members because I look at some of the elders that we deal with and some of their children, their adult children, and I'm thinking if you deal with business the way you are dealing, the way you are dealing with your parents and us and having to go through this, you know, hate jumping, I'm shocked. Mm. You know? And it's a shame because I've got to keep that, um, that uh, sort of mutual ground because that person could also be another client of mine mm. somewhere else. You can't have a view of that person. It's just sometimes family. You've said friends, but you didn't actually mention family. You said yeah. friends, but you never yeah. mentioned family. That's why I'm having. No. No, you can't choose them, can you? No, you can't. <laughs> and that's the thing. You can't choose them. So sometimes the way you deal with them is yeah. the way you deal with them is the way that you wouldn't deal. You deal with your worst enemy. Yeah. You know. Oh, it's terrible sometimes. But yeah, no, the um, but yeah, I mean, I guess in theory, friendships, partners, and business are all voluntary interactions. Yeah. You know, it's it's something you have a choice over. It should still be nice to your mum though. Always. And your dad. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I challenge the whole, um, I acknowledge culturally the whole German thing, get down to business and socialise um, later, particularly in a sales environment, because I was in a recent sales environment um, not so long ago. And it was with a contact that I hadn't had contact with for at least a year. And so I couldn't take them by surprise. I made it very clear. I didn't ring them because that would be taking them by surprise because I hadn't been in contact. And so I emailed them and said, you know, just broadly, um, I'm really interested in having a coffee with you for this reason. So they said, yeah, sure, no problem. Um, but it was an opportunity for a company to partner with another organisation and they were in the industry that this organisation was interested in partnering with, but I never said to them, it's for you to consider. I want to talk to you because you're an expert in the industry, so let me know the lay of the land. And so that meeting, it was an hour meeting, and 45 minutes of it was catching up, it was seeing where we both were, where we're at now, what's been going on in that past year, you know, and then, they directed the pace of the, when they let, let me know when they were talking about to get down to business. But I think that's because we hadn't been in contact, whereas in your situation, you're obviously existing with your clientele. Yeah. But in the end, fortunately, they actually said, look, I'll talk to the person who's the decision maker and we'll put our, our company forward, which was not what I expected. But I think it was because I was respectful of um, that relationship, the business relationship. It was like I was respecting them like a friend, like you were saying. Like, I'm not going to just go in all boots and all go, hey, I've got a really good opportunity here. Let's just do it kind of thing. But explained it and allowed them to ask all their questions and then allowed them to then let me know what the next step was for them. Mm. And that was somebody you already knew but hadn't seen for a while yeah, yeah. I mean I think w when you look at sales in, as, a, as a role I mean and, and we all do it we all we're all in sales in fact there's a, I think we had a, co a course in London called everyone's in sales because whether you were in it or not you got trained on it but ultimately wh what what you're trying to do in in sales if you're good at what you do is you, you you're trying to understand uh, that somebody's got a problem or something needs fixing or they need a solution for something and you're trying to identify if you're capable of providing that solution but ultimately if you sit in the in the, the other person's shoes that they've got to fix this problem and they're nervous about getting it wrong you know and in some cases if it's their own business it could be catastrophic if it's their job it, they could lose their job um, so ultimately they're trying to trust you they want to trust you that you're telling the truth, but they also want um, they want some comfort that you can deliver what you're what you what you're saying you can, and that doesn't happen just by a quick presentation. And you know that that does take time. It, you, and that's why you know you, I, I always approach every meeting with just it's just good to see somebody and catch up and find out where they're up to. You know, if there's an opportunity, it'll present itself. 
if there isn't, they'll hopefully remember, remember me when there is an opportunity. But, you know, that constant kind of, you know, I don't have coffees for coffee's sake, but, you know, you, 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 you pick who you spend your time with. But, but certainly, you know, I've, I've got a number of healthy business relationships that I've nurtured over the last six, seven years in Perth who will never buy anything from me. But the amount of people they've sent my way is off the chart. Um, and that was never the intention at the outset. It's just a product of that respect and that treating them like a friend and, you know, doing and, and, and putting yourself out, asking what you can do for them rather than the other way around. You know, is there anything, is there anything that I can help you with? What are you trying to do? You know, so many people, in fact, talking to that, I've got a present for you. But we're just, um, you know, I'm, I'm getting anybody and everybody to try this space. Because once they've tried it, they generally will work out very quickly whether it's for them or not. And it'll either make them more productive or it won't suit them. So um, I've got a little day pass for all of you here. Or you can either, you can either swap it. <laughs> Absolutely. So this, is, this gives you either a free day pass or if that's not something you're interested in, it gives you an hour in the boardroom. So you can all have one of these before you, before you leave. A pleasure. Um, but yeah, so I guess that that's my five cents worth for what it's worth in my this little intimate group. Was it? All right, if you'll leave a card, I'll send you all an invoice. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks so much, Jamie. I was going to feature our newest member, but unfortunately she couldn't make it, which is Pile Repno, who is the person, Perth personality photographer. Um, but I'll do that next time. So our next event is on the 1st of December, and it is our final event for the year. So it is here. And so far, it's a theme of beauty. I'm working on the other half of the theme, beer. <laughs> so it's, it's going to be beer and beauty and more. Um, so we've got the tick for the beauty and I'm almost halfway there, over halfway for the beer. But if that falls over with enough connections in our community, we'll make it happen. So we'll have a beer and beauty um, <laughs> different event here on the 1st of December. Um, thanks to Jamie again at Liberty. So. There's food, there's wine, there's people to connect with, there's guests in the room that you haven't met before, members and guests. There's a lot of people that you need to meet, so I'll let you get on with it. So thanks for being here.